So I choose. Say that with me. I choose. So we started this a few Wednesday nights ago. So we taught a uh, pastor his part. He's been doing focusing on I choose prayer. And the last time I preached, I talked just about sort of an introduction, making right choices. And let me say this, and this is kind of the, the big idea of this series. This is like what I want you to take away and what I want you to remember. And I want you to hear this. So every Wednesday night when we preach on I Choose, the big idea is this. You are free to choose. God gives us free choice. But you are not free from the consequences of your choice. You need to make the right choices because when you choose, your choice will actually choose you. You first make your choice, then your choice will make you. So choose carefully, choose prayerfully, choose spiritually, and let God lead and guide your life. Now you say, this message uh, isn't for me uh, when we talk about choosing. And I want to focus tonight on I choose joy. Somebody say joy. Because joy is not the same as what we use, well, I'm just not happy. We're not talking about the blues and the blahs. We're not talking about uh, somebody hurts your feelings. We're talking about something that transcends. It's a rock. It's a foundation. Joy is a foundation. Now, you may be going through some sorrows, some heartaches, some trials, but underneath, there's the joy that is a foundation. And you have to choose joy. And uh, you say, well, this message isn't for me. I don't really need to hear a message on joy. Well, I see you every week. A gifted public speaker, a gifted public speaker was asked to recall, recall his most difficult speaking assignment. He says, that is easy. He said, I was to give an address to the National Conference of Undertakers. The topic they gave me when I spoke at that event, he said, was how to look sad at a $10,000 funeral. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, some of you don't have to be taught to look sad. You got it down pat. I mean, some people, you don't have to bribe them, teach them. They just look sad. And you've got to understand that your day tends to go the same direction as the corner of your mouth. Your day tends to go the same direction as the corner of your mouth. It's not hard to understand why the devil fights so hard for us to not have the joy of the Lord. He knows the joy of the Lord is powerful. The joy of the Lord is potent. And the joy of the Lord is essential. And let's choose joy. Let's give the Lord a hand of joy tonight, a hand of praise tonight. I choose joy. It is joy. I'm going to do like the pastor. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. You ever heard that song? Would you stand with me tonight and go to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8 and Philippians chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 8 and Philippians chapter 4. Whittledew told us that the shortest man in the Bible was Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Amen. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. I want to encourage you to go to Falcon Camp meeting next week. I was talking to Lazaro at work yesterday. He has Monday and Tuesday off, and I believe I've got him talked into coming down Monday night, bringing the kids. They do have kids camp meeting, and uh, I just, I, I believe it will bless you. Next Wednesday night, as far as I know, we're not having service here next Wednesday night. So next Wednesday night, we're uh, going to give you a chance to go. Now, the Wednesday night service is geared to the youth, but I promise you the place will be filled, uh, and they'll have great praise and worship, and uh, a speaker will speak next Wednesday night. So if you can at all possibly be at Falcon any night, Monday night, 7 o'clock, Tuesday night, 7, is it 7 or 7.30? Uh, I just really don't know. Just get there at 7 and pray for 30 minutes, you know. Um, which one is it, Pastor? You got the brochure there? All right, Monday night, 7, and it doesn't take but a little over, right at an hour, depending on where you live, uh, and just enjoy a good night of camp meeting. Maybe you want to take the next day off or something, but I love it when... Uh, 
churches come together. And uh, Brian Cutshaw is preaching Monday night, Tuesday night. Powerful, powerful preacher. And I know. And W.A. Mills is one of the speakers. He'll be preaching in the little octagon tabernacle. That little octagon tabernacle. If you've never, if you can go down there at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, if you're off for something and can go, and you can't go to any other service, that little bitty octagon is an eight-sided old building that the Pentecostal Church started in, uh, basically started in, merged in with the fire baptized. And that old building there, uh, and it's got old wood uh, benches there, and the pulpit is, uh, is, is in the middle of that, and W.A. Mills is preaching, and he'll actually be preaching at our church uh, Sunday morning. And I know you'll be blessed by that, and then he's going to be preaching in those little octagon tabernacle services. So if you haven't been there, or if you haven't been in a while, take it out of your routine. Uh, it only comes once a year. And who knows, you just might get an answer to prayer. You just might get a word from the Lord. Or even this, God may use you to bless someone else. You know, I always think about me going to Falcon Camp meeting. Well, I just don't have time. I'm kind of busy. Well, maybe God is nudging you to go because in the altar you may pray for somebody who nobody else but you at that moment can give them that word that they need. So just say, here am I. Say that with me. Here am I. Send me. And by the way, by the way, this is free. This is out of my own devotions. I'm reading the book of Isaiah right now. You never, ne when, when, when Isaiah saw the prophet, uh, or saw the Lord high and lifted up, and he said, who will go for me? Uh, Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. And the very next scripture, God said, go. God will never put a here am I, send me in your heart without correspondingly having a place and a something for you to do and a place for you to go. Now, that's free of charge. That was just, uh, that's nothing to do with this. But go to the book of Nehemiah. Y'all love the Lord tonight. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. All right, if you're there, say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Woo, I'm getting excited. <laughs> I love Falcon Camp meeting. This charges my batteries. I went from 2004 to 2015, 2003, uh, yeah, 4 to 2011 straight years. I never missed but one service of the entire camp meeting. And I tell you, it's powerful. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. If you're there, say amen. amen. And Nehemiah, which is, uh, which is the Tisratha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, do not weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions to them who have, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. D don't be sorry. Read the last line with me. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody say, I choose joy. I choose now, Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 4. It says, and by the way, um, I don't have this scripture here, but the shortest verse in the Bible, in the English Bible, is Jesus wept. But really, the Bible is written in Greek, and the shortest verse in the Greek original Bible is, uh, I believe, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16. Don't go up there because it might be wrong. Rejoice evermore. Just two words. And the Greek is shorter than Jesus wept uh, in the Greek. But uh, so trust me, this thing about joy is a choice. Philippians 4 and verse 4. If you're there, say amen. amen. Read it out loud. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. When? And again, I say rejoice. Father, we choose joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. We give you the praise for it. And everybody said amen. amen. Turn around and tell somebody, I choose to be a blessing to you. Now let's give the Lord a hand clap of joy tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you read the book of Nehemiah, Praise God. We're going to fellowship. Amen. When you read the book of Nehemiah, you've got to understand that the once proud great homeland country of Israel was in ruins. It had been invaded and destroyed by Babylon. Its streets were empty. Its temple was in rubble. Its gates and walls were torn down. 
But the book of Nehemiah tells how that God gave him favor with the new king of Persia. And so he was allowed to lead people to go back to the ruined city of Jerusalem and begin the rebuilding process. So get the picture. These people have come from a land far away to the home of their ancestors. You know they got to be excited. You know that the journey has been difficult, but they're looking forward to relocating back to the homeland. But when they came to Jerusalem, they saw it not as they expected, but in ruin and rubble and in waste. It had to be devastating. This is the place where people lived. Uh, this is the place where God's temple was supposed to be, where people worshipped, where the prophets preached. But now when they came into the city, they saw it a pile of mess. But Nehemiah had a mission and was sent there by God. And he told the people, don't go by what you see. Roll up your sleeves. It's time to get to work. And while they were working to make matters worse, do you believe the devil's going to let you roll up your sleeves and go to work and just sit there and not do anything? They began being persecuted. And some of the people who invaded the land were doing everything they could to stop them from rebuilding the wall and rebuilding their city. And I don't have time to go into the whole story, but it's against this backdrop. This is the context of the text. This is where Nehemiah told them that the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, I don't know how, how, I know how it looks hopeless. I know how things are not as they used to be. I know there's tremendous pressure from persecutors. I know it's not easy. I know when Ezra read the scriptures, we're not even where we need to be when he read and preached but brick by brick, and here a little and there a little, day by day, he said, we are going to be, we are going to rebuild. I know it looks hopeless. I know that we're being persecuted. I know that when Ezra read you the law that we came up short and we needed to repent. But we're going to keep on building and we're going to go forward. And it's in that context of the essential element. How are we going to go forward? How are we going to make it through? And here's what Nehemiah said. I want you to know that here's how you're going to keep on rebuilding, to keep on point, to, to, to fulfill your divine goals, and to reach your mission. It's not just going to be hammer and nails that do this. It's not just going to be your Bible knowledge like Ezra has taught you. It's not even going to be good leadership. Those things are, are wonderful and necessary but if you don't have something underneath it's just going to not go anywhere and here's what you need the joy of the Lord then he adds these words the joy of the Lord is turn around tell somebody the joy of the Lord is what now tell them your strength. You got the hammer. You got the nail. You got the word from God. You got the promises of God. You've got the divine mission. You've got the word of God. You've got everything you need. But here, let me tell you something. You've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And the joy of the Lord is what strengthens us. His word brings joy. His promises bring joy. It is joy unspeakable. And you've got to choose it. This is not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's not a pat on the back. A get them, go get them. It is something from God. It is supernatural. But you've got to choose the joy of the Lord. It is your strength. Can you say amen tonight? There's one thing that will stop soul winning. There's one thing that will keep you in the prison of bitterness. There's one thing that will keep church from having revival. It's vitamin J deficiency. The joy of the Lord. Here's another one, Pastor. The joy of the Lord. You ever heard that one? Is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And then it goes, if you want joy, you must ask for it. You remember that song? Ha, ha, ha. That's it. I love it. I love it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. 
ha, ha. Literally, that's how you sing that song. Hey, you know, we Pentecostals are crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are crazy. We're about as crazy as the Salvation Army, folks. I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. And by the way, it's good to have you tonight, brother. Amen. 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 Oh, William Booth from the Salvation Army. Now, I'm going to tell you, he had joy. It was a man of God and moved this world for the Lord. So you've got to choose it. You've got to choose it in tough times. You've got to choose it in tough situations. You can't, you can't let it pull you down. You can't let things pull you. If you're in the hospital room, you've got to choose it. When you're at the funeral home, you've got to choose it. And I know that it's a t trying time and death is a trying time. But I've been to the grave of loved ones. But underneath, I choose the joy of of the Lord. Can you say amen? Now I want to give you three things tonight. Number one, I want to give you the provision of that joy. You can't choose it if it's not provided. The provision. Somebody say the provision. Now I want you to know that the joy of the Lord has been provided. Look at John chapter 15 and verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. I provided you joy. Cash it in. Take it. Here it is. I choose it. John chapter 16, verse 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. 1 John 1 and 4. All these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Galatians 5 and 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. Now see, joy is a byproduct of some things. It's a provision, but it's a provision that's a byproduct of like salvation. If you're saved, that ought to right there bring some joy into your life. You know, just when you're having a hard day and things aren't going your way, just stop and remind yourself, it's my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm in the palm of his hand and no man will pluck him out of my hand. And, and, I, and I believe the report of the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 51 and 12, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. You get your, when you're saved, your sins are forgiven, your burdens are lifted, your guilt is removed. Uh, uh, you were once blind, but now you're see. You were on your way to hell. You're, now you're on your way to heaven. And when you have that experience uh, as a byproduct, uh, you get joy. If a person gets saved and they're lacking joy, I wonder what happened. I really do. I have seen people get saved in very hard situations. But I'll tell you what, knowing that that's taken care of brings joy into anybody's life. Amen? Go back to Galatians 5 and 22. The Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. So if you want to choose joy, you also have to choose the fruit of the Spirit. You have to choose the the function and the flow of a Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Holy Spirit, uh, one, one author many years ago, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Remember that book? That, that was a great book. Um, Benny Hinn, that's right. That's all I'm going to say about Benny Hinn. I'm going to move on, all right. The, I went to his church in Orlando, Florida. It, when he was pastoring in Orlando, I, I went to his church. And I went to one of his crusades back in the 90s. And I can, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. This is, this, I learned something. This is the joy of the Lord. But I learned this because I was a real skeptic of Benny Hinn. I, I just didn't go for some of the things that he did. I, 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 uh, I just I, I had some problems. And I remember going to Charlotte to hear him with a friend of mine who, who was uh, taking me. I was just in college. And, uh, and, man, I was just so skeptical, 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 skeptical. And, uh, and I remember we went to the big Charlotte Coliseum. That Coliseum in Charlotte is huge. I'm, I'm talking about bigger than downtown Wilson. I mean, you could put all of Wilson in that thing. And I remember we drove and we walked in that parking lot and we walked outside the corridors uh, before you actually enter into the, to the auditorium itself. And, and, and there were several thousands, like 25,000 people gathered. And, and I remember that there was hustle and bustle. And I remember we opened the door to step into the arena. I will never forget it to this day. Never forget it. That was like 25 years ago, 1993. And I remember when I walked into the arena, I felt the tangible presence of God. It was like you stepped out. 
It's like any other thing. When I stepped in, I felt, the, I felt God in that house. And I learned a great secret. It is not about Benny Hinn. But I looked around, and there was already 15,000 Christians who came worshiping and praising the Lord. We hadn't even started church. I'm just talking about it was in the building. Amen. I'm talking about they were just talking about the sports. But I could feel something. And I'll tell you, joy does that when people come together. It's a byproduct of coming to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Can you give the Lord a hand of praise for joy unspeakable? You see, that is the provision of joy. You have salvation. Say amen. amen. The Spirit's indwelling. Say amen. amen. The promises of God. Say amen. amen. You say, well, I've been betrayed. How can I have joy? Well, you've been betrayed. The Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Well, I'm facing death, and one day we all will. You have the promise that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Say Amen. In sickness, with his stripes, I am healed. I don't understand what I'm going through. How can I have joy? The Bible says all things work together for good. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, not only the provision of joy, but number two, I want to talk to you about the necessity of joy. Because this ties back in with the book of Nehemiah. This, joy, really, you need to choose joy because really it's a good thing. It makes you feel good. It's awesome. But I'm going to tell you something. Joy is a necessity. How many of you, if you go to work and you're in a bad mood, how many of you know it makes work worse? Well, let's just, just let's say if you, if you go to work and you've got a headache, and I mean your head is pounding, and you go to work at 8, you get off at 5, and by 8.03 you are in absolute misery. How many of you know that? It just happens. That's life. Uh, preachers, we sometimes we can come to the pulpit and have pain in our bodies that we're wrestling with, and and uh, to just to get here uh, is a fight and a struggle. But I'm going to tell you, going to work, if you don't have joy, you know, and this is something really, 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 really we have to work with. Really, 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 we have to. I think me as a, a my pastorate over the last 20 years, and looking back and seeing things uh, that I don't recognize, but. That you've got to, in, joy is a necessity in the work of the Lord. Well, I got to teach that Sunday school lesson. I'm telling you, I don't have enough time. The people don't pay attention. Already you lost the battle right there. I'm on that usher schedule again, and last week <laughs> it was raining. Why can't I just come to church and sit and be blessed and go home? Because the church ain't heaven. The church is a work. You can go to heaven and sit and be blessed to the sweet by and by and sing his prayer. And by the way, you're going to work in heaven too. Let me just get you, get you prepared for that. You think you're going to go to heaven and sit on a cot and, and rest all day? No, sir. In heaven, the Bible says his servants shall serve him day and night. Oh, praise God. Somewhere in a corner of glory, I'm going to be gathering some people together and saying, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And let's go up to the house of the Lord and let's worship. And, and he that cometh not up to the house of the Lord upon him shall be no rain. Oh, I'm telling you, there's a work to be done for all eternity, and it works better when we have joy unspeakable. Man, I gotta be at church, I gotta, I gotta do this, I gotta, you know, and then and then sometimes things go wrong at church. Get our wires crossed. Well, I was scheduled to sing this Sunday. I'll, I'll never forget years and years ago I was pastoring a certain place. I'm not gonna call it a place, I'm not gonna call it names, because it don't matter. It happens a thousand times. But uh, so and so was scheduled to sing. And inadvertently, another so-and-so was scheduled to sing. And we didn't have time for both. Well, guess what? Somebody lost the joy of the Lord. I don't need to go any further, do I? <laughs> you got the point. You know, things get, wires get crossed, schedules get mixed. You know, well, it happens all the time. No, well, you know what, so does, <laughs> so does life. You know, my heart beats all the time, too. I mean, things are going to happen. You know, it's just not a perfect world. Your job's not perfect. School's not perfect. We can't just pull out. We just need the joy of the Lord. I, oh, I was on the schedule. You were on the schedule. Well, you go ahead and sing, and I'll just worship the Lord today with joy unspeakable. Because, by the way, it's, it's not my talent anyway. My talent is on loan from God, and I lay it back 
back down at him. And if he wants me to sing, I'll sing. If he doesn't want me to sing, I don't want to sing. I'll just sit back and, and praise God uh, uh, to myself. Uh, because it, it's, singing is not my joy. It brings fulfillment. Uh, there's a difference between fulfillment and fulfillment can be produce joy. But my joy is never in altogether my ministry. My ministry is a fulfillment. Uh, I get tired in the ministry because I'm weary at times. But I'll tell you, the byproduct is this, uh, that I'm serving the Lord. Uh, and that's where the joy comes in. Uh, and if, if, he, if he wants me to preach, I preach. If he don't, I'll sit back and hear Pastor Nelson and others preach. I love it. Praise God. I don't, it ain't all about me. It's all about the joy of the Lord. I don't want anything to get my joy. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, somebody give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. The joy, you got to work. You can't do it without joy. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at this. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 34. If, just give me a thumbs up when you're there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. And, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reel this in a little bit. I done, got, I done got the fish pulling that string, and I need to reel this on in. Don't let, in, I repeat, don't let anything steal your joy in working for the Lord. When people don't show up and do their part, well, don't walk around with a frown on your face because visitors are walking by and people who are on drugs are walking by and you're over there with a frown on your face and they're like, I need deliverance and this lady don't even have it or this man don't even have it. For You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't let people get under your skin. Don't let and, and you say, well, preacher, you don't know what I had to deal with. Are you kidding me? I was, I was at a, a place one time, and I was full of the joy of the Lord, and I had a sermon ready, and I was anointed, and sister so-and-so said, Pastor, come here. I need to talk to you. <laughs> well, what is it, my? I don't like, mm -mm 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 -mm. And this other lady, this other lady, which was her sister in coat, not sister in blood, but that sister spirit, she looked at me and said, well, what you going to do about that? I said, I'm going to praise God anyway and go preach. And then I left them alone. Glory to God. Amen. The devil's just going to try to attack your joy. Amen. Hallelujah. You would say, well, I'm going to go to another church across town. I promise you it's going to be there too. For a while it's going to... I, I've got to be careful what I say because there was a time I moved. The Lord moved me. I know he moved me. There's no question. He released me and moved me. And I remember I had, I, I, when I left a, a certain assignment, there, praise God, God was blessing. But I'll tell you, the devil got in there and really messed things up. And, and I knew it was time for me to go. And I remember going to the next place. And I remember the first three months, it was like, oh, boy, man, the burden's lifted off my shoulder. Man, this is like, oh, thank you, Lord. And about, it was literally three months into it, the same burden I felt and the same, uh, same stuff was, and different things was happening all over again. Folks, I'm just here to tell you that it's not the circumstances around you ever. It is the joy of the Lord on the inside. Can you give him a hand of praise here tonight? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to say, I choose joy. Joy is not a geographic location. People say, well, I'm going to move to the mountains and I'm going to have joy. Well, the mountains may bring you temporary joy, but if you hadn't got it inside, the mountains ain't going to make a difference. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. Say amen. amen. If you got it. You got it? For you had compassion in me and my bonds and took what? The spoiling of your goods. Knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. In other words, these Christians were being persecuted. Oh, you're going to serve God? Well, we're calling your banknote in. If you're serving God, uh, we're putting the pressure on. We don't want you serving God. Uh, in fact, we'll repossess your house. We'll tear your house down. We'll throw some of you to the lines. Uh, and you know what brought them through some of those terrible things? What well, the writer of Hebrews here says, you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. And in other words, uh, no, they didn't like the fact that their goods was messed up. Uh, but they decided that, hey, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. You can tear up my house. 
house. You can take my car. You can throw me to the lions. That's okay because I got a better place in heaven uh, in the sweet by and by. And I'm going to rejoice now. now go, notice it, they didn't wait till they got to heaven to, till they got joy. They had joy even when their goods were being uh, attacked by the enemy because we know that we are more than conquerors in the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. So when you're working for the Lord, you need to have you need to choose joy. Pull yourself together. Prepare that things might not go your way and, and have a sweet spirit and give the world a smile and, you're, and know that your day, t the, 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 your day tends to go in the direction of the corners of your mouth. Amen. Now what about witnessing? Look at Psalm 51 and 12. I can't be a witness to others on the job if I'm all the time all, all out of sorts and mad about something. One of the things that will attract people to Christianity, because it baffles people, is our joy. They're like, how can you still have joy when this happened and that happened? That is a witness. Well, I can tell you have I have, how I have joy. Well, you've been laid off and you, and, and you know, gas went up, what, two or three years, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, gas went up like $4 a gallon. And all I heard was gas is up, gas is up. It's like you people and everybody, in the, I'm talking about in the church. People say you sanctified through the Holy Ghost on the way to heaven. The gas is up, gas is up. What are we going to do? Gas is up. What are we going to do? I said we're going to have the joy of the Lord and fill her up. Be thankful you don't have to walk. I'll pay $10 a gallon to keep from walking from my house. I says, God is my witness, and I won't diminish my tithe either or the offerings from the Lord. I'll just, you know, don't write. When everybody's negative, I just, I, just, I just don't like negative talk. I just don't like it. It's negative, negative, negative. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. And, uh, folks, we've got to accentuate the positive. Now, there's times we have to address things, times we have to have a, a meeting, and times we have to be honest with one another, times we need to kind of, the Bible does say, speak the truth, but in love. Witnessing. Psalm 51 says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with your free spirit. Look at verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted. When do sinners are converted? Man, when we have some joy in our life. Amen. Joy is contagious. Say amen. I, you, know how, you know how I know joy is contagious? Because if you hear somebody laugh, don't it? You, yeah, there you go, right there. And before you know it, we'll all be laughing, right? <laughs> Laughter is contagious. And you know that bad spirit can be contagious too. You know, the Bible says when you are fasting. Now, how many of you know fasting is a powerful thing? I've been on fast in my life, and I'm telling you, times when I didn't think it did anything, and times when I saw God really come down, and, and, and all of it God rewards. Amen. Amen. But I'll just be honest with you. Let's talk on the human level. Fasting is not easy. It's tough because your body, first of all, your body has toxins built in. And, the, and, and after eight or nine hours uh, of going without food, your body is like telling you, hey, I'm going to die. But, the, you know, you're not going to die. And, uh, and so when you're feeling bad, the Bible says when you are fasting, do not appear unto men at, that you're fasting. And then the scripture says, anoint your face. Somebody tell somebody, you need to anoint your face. <laughs> I don't mean anything that wrong. <laughs> anoint yourself. How about this? Turn around and tell somebody, anoint yourself. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So the Pharisees, the Pharisees, when they went on fast, they wanted everybody to know they were fasting because their reward was their self-righteousness. Oh, uh, Brother Pharisee, how are you doing today? Oh, I feel so bad because I've been on a fast and, and I love, well, why don't you eat? Oh, I love God. And no, they didn't love God. They just wanted people to see how holy they were. And Jesus was saying, do the opposite. He's saying, don't appear unto men that you're fasting and anoint your face, uh, put a smile on. Uh, and, and I tell people, sometimes you have to be a holy hypocrite. Sometimes you have to, and it's not being, lack of being genuine. 
But there is a principle there that there are times you're going to have to kind of pull yourself together and anoint yourself. You're waiting for the preacher to anoint you. You're waiting for the deacons to anoint you. You're waiting for the choir to sing and then they anoint you out of good singing. No, brother, come on to church and anoint yourself uh, and you'll just get in the flow whether it's anointed or not. Amen. Come on now. Give him a hand of praise tonight. I got to anoint myself. Glory. I've been busted, broke, busted, and disgusted, but I anointed myself. People lied on me, but I anointed myself. I'm here to tell you I've been in the valley, but I in the valley he restores my soul, and I anointed myself. It is time for us to anoint ourselves. You can't wait for somebody to sing it all the time, somebody to preach it all the time. You got to get up and put your feet on the floor and say, I am blessed and highly favored of God and I anoint myself because I am the child of God and I choose to anoint myself I choose the joy of the Lord it is my strength I've got a world to witness to I've got a work to do I've got something that the world didn't give me and the world can't take it away I anoint myself with the blessing and the favor of God he said you anoint yourself why don't you give him a hand of praise for joy tonight it'll make a difference Oh, praise God, somebody. And I tell you, the warfare, when you're fighting a war, you can't fight if you're all discouraged. Jerry Falwell said God can't use a, a discouraged preacher. Man, that hit me years ago. I refuse to be discouraged. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not troubled at times. It doesn't mean that I'm not at times concerned but there's a difference between being concerned and discouraged. Discouraged. Be thou strong and very courageous. For the Lord thy God is with thee. You are not alone. And, God, and I'll tell you, doubt, doubt is a thing we struggle with, but unbelief is a sin from the pit of hells. And you better make sure you don't have unbelief in your life. you got to choose joy and you got to choose faith. I believe in the word of the Lord. Say amen. So, I'm telling you, this joy is a necessity. Turn around and tell somebody, anoint yourself. Amen. Now, what are the enemies of joy? The enemies of joy. The necessity of joy. The provision of joy. But there's some enemies of joy. And these are the things that will cause you to lose your joy. Unforgiveness. And by the way, if there is a lack of joy in your life, sustaining, spiritual, foundation of joy, despite your circumstances, don't say, well, I'm, I'm, I, I lack joy because my car insurance is due. I mean, no, 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 no. That shouldn't take your joy. Well, well, <laughs> my car was repossessed. Well, that might take my joy particularly my Lincoln Town car, amen. But I tell you, thank the Lord. <laughs> thank the Lord. If they, if they did take my car, then how can you have joy? Well, <laughs> I still got two feet. Amen. 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 Pat and Charlie, that's right. I love that. <laughs> Before Ford, there was uh, Pat and brother, Sister Pat and Brother Charlie. Amen. I tell you. <laughs> Don't. Unforgiveness. That'll steal your joy. You can't have... In fact, in fact, what I was trying to say, and I got all sidetracked. You say, well, preacher, you're just getting all sidetracked. No, I'm having fun doing this message. Just like I want to do it. Amen. I told Brother Blue, I gave him my full manuscript tonight. I said, well, brother, I said, you can preach it. He said, no, no, you do it. I said, well, Brother Bird, T.O. Bird, my mentor, my father in the Lord, before he went to heaven, he told me, he said, you can put it on paper, but you can't put hot air on paper. <laughs> Amen. And so this is hot air. This is me just getting anointed and just telling you from my heart here. But if you, if you are, if there's a lack of joy in your life, search it out. Why? And it could be because the Lord will show you there's some unforgiveness. And we got to forgive. Amen. The spirit of offense will rob joy. The Bible says, I will go and return into Hosea 5 and 15. I will go and return to my place to they acknowledge their offense. 
God says, I'll return to my place. And when he, when he withdraws, there's a lack of joy because there's what? Joy in his presence is the fullness of joy. So if you don't have fullness of joy, it might be because you're not in his presence. Well, then why aren't you in his presence? If you're, if you're praying and you're still lacking joy, then maybe there's some kind of offense there. Please, please, please be careful not to be offended at people uh, on the job, in the church, in, in things of that nature. Say amen unconfessed sin oh my goodness now I'm gonna tell you something don't come into church clapping and shouting and dancing and praising God and you're living in sin Amen. now because I, David Wilkerson years ago brought this out one of his sermons but but if you are in un, if you are in unconfessed sin knowing sin that's against the Bible that clearly states this is sin this is wrong and you're in here waving your hands and you're it's almost like you're flaunting your sin it's like I don't care about you God I'm just going to get in the groove and the jive of it he don't go for that these people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me and, we can, and, and, and if you're not careful, you can, you can get into a, to, to a, a mode of seemingly worship when, you're not, when, when, when really you're just, you're just going through the motions of it. Because I'll tell you, you cannot worship the Lord in truth and spirit if you are habitually in unconfessed sin. Can I get a witness out there? Now, I'm not talking about sins that you struggle with. There's a difference between struggle sins and unconfessed sins. Are y'all still with me tonight? Struggle sins are the sins that you struggle with, that you hate, that you, like anger. You hate it, but every now and then uh, your anger gets the best of you, and so you struggle with that. And then like, like you may go to work and, and you say, Lord, please help me with my anger. Please help me with my anger. And, and let's say uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, something just really hits you wrong, and, and you really lose your anger, and you feel bad about it, and you come to church that night. What are you supposed to do? Let me tell you what you're supposed to do. Praise God and worship God. Well, you just said you can't worship God with unconfessed sin. That's exactly right. Did you confess that sin? Did you feel bad about that sin? Don't let the guilt of that sin keep you from worshiping the Lord because that is a struggle that we all, every, by the way, yeah, turn around and tell somebody you got your struggle. Yes, you do. Yeah. Now, if the person next to you says, oh, I don't have any struggles, uh, then turn around and tell them, then your struggle is pride. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We all got our struggles. We're all human. No, no, no matter whose bones is on, flesh is flesh, no matter whose bones is on. But, uh, but now here's the opposite of that. If you knowingly commit sin, you knowingly gossip, and you enjoy it. I don't care. I just say what I want to say. You need to confess that sin before you come in here and start worshiping God. Amen. If you knowingly enjoy things that ought not to be done, I ain't even going to go, you know what I'm talking about. You know, we know that you can't do that. And you'd be surprised. Pete. People, uh, <clears throat> I, there was a couple that I, uh, I was ministering to one time, and, and, uh, and they went out to, <laughs> they, they were telling me, they went out to see Tommy Barnett. I said, oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Anybody remember Tommy Barnett or know of Tommy Barnett? Raise your hand if you ever heard of Tommy Barnett. Well, great, great preacher, great church, uh, Phoenix uh, Assembly of God, First Assembly of God, I believe it's First Assembly of God in Phoenix. I don't know if he's still the pastor there or not. This is many years ago. Oh, pastor, we, we had a one. Now, this couple was not married. Not married at all. I said, so y'all went out to hear Tommy Barnett. Oh, pastor, he preached an awesome word. We loved the worship and everything. And some things happened uh, and a little bit later. And, I, and one of them came to me, and they were crying, and some things were happening. I said, oh, by the way, you know, you said y'all went out to hear Tommy Barnett and you loved to worship. Oh, we did. I said, just tell me, did y'all have separate hotel rooms? And she didn't say a word. Now, I want to know how in the world you can stay in the same hotel room and not be married. And then tell me you're worshiping God. You're not. 
you're deceived. You're deceived at worst or you are deceived at best or at worst you're flaunting your sin before God. Oh, folks, sin will rob you of your joy. Keep the record clear. Confess your sins to the Lord. And guess what? He is just and faithful to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Don't have a self-righteous spirit either. But at the same time, don't walk around and, 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 and have no, uh, no fear of sin. You just, deal, you just do it. Well, God understands. Uh, he does understand. Let me tell you what he understands. He understands one thing, repentance. And so pray what the psalmist prayed. Lord, uh, create in me a clean heart and let the word of my mouth... Uh, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And cleanse thou me from secret faults. Uh, is who among us ha has not got the stain uh, of some sin? And so walk holy before your God. And holiness brings joy. In fact, they used to call sanctified people. They got the joy of the Lord. Uh, and they would shout up and down the aisles when they got good and sanctified. Uh, go all the way with God. Uh, love the Lord. Love people. Uh, don't, let, don't let the enemy steal the joy. Because the joy of the Lord. Would you stand? with me tonight stand with me tonight the joy of the Lord uh, is your strength your day tends to go the same way as the corners of your mouth uh, come on tonight church let's lift up our hands and let's choose joy tonight uh, let's refuse sin uh, let's refuse disobedience uh, let's refuse uh, uh, um, uh, the, the what people say and what people do uh, let's rejoice let's make a choice tonight uh, I rejoice by choice say that with me I rejoice by choice shout it with me I rejoice by choice. I'm going to anoint myself and believe God to do amazing things. Now give him another hand of praise tonight. Amen. <laughs> pastor Jerry, come on up. Our lead pastor, we love you. And you just close us out over how you feel led. Amen. I choose joy. I choose joy. Amen. I love that verse he quoted, John 15 and 11. That's my verse. First time I ever read it. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I said, I receive that, Lord. And from that moment, this very moment, 30-some years ago, I still have that joy. I have Jesus' joy. You have it, too. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Thank God for his joy. It's a whole lot different from joy and just being happy like Pastor Ricky said joy is that inward quality it's because of our relationship with Jesus Christ not because of the circumstances of life thank you Pastor Ricky I want to remind all of the kids that are here if you have a change pouch uh, Sunday evening we're taking our go offering to Falcon if you don't have a change pouch and you'd like to get one see sister carl and edwards she'll give you one but we want to bring all of those sunday because sunday night we're taking our offering to falcon uh the service will be sunday night at falcon wa mills will be preaching here i talked to him uh, today He'll be preaching here sunday morning and um, then uh that night we'll all be going to falcon then it's Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. I use getting a group together to go. If you, if you want to ride with them, we'll make provision. Uh, Pastor Ricky will be there through the duration, and I will be there myself. So there will be no service here on Wednesday night. Uh, I think Brother Philip and his, some of the rangers there at a special meeting. And so we just spread out. But... Uh, we're doing kingdom, kingdom work. So once again, uh, please uh, bring those change pouches. And uh, if you haven't made your pledge yet, I think we're around $3,000 right now. 38, that $3,800 now. So we'll have an update on the board Sunday. Our goal is $5,000. Uh, we'd like to meet that. Uh, the fort, praise God, I got to give you a update on that as far as i know we passed everything i, I w went down yesterday and they haven't turned our current on but they tell me the order's in and uh as far as i know everything is according to the specifications i pulled my drawings out and carried them down and looked looked at my drawings and uh so 
And let's say, come up for curveball. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. <laughs> like Pastor Ricky said, you just keep on working at it. Hallelujah. Just keep on keeping on. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Hallelujah. That's, that's been an elephant. But it's going to be a great blessing. Uh, you young boys, start inviting your friends. We're going to move into that Royal Ranger Fort. My wife is going to... Uh, to give some furniture for the commander's office and we've already given i'm gonna be asking people to give again i'm gonna paint that thing and i'm gonna give another thousand dollars i've already given a thousand dollars toward it so if you want to pray about it ask god what to, the more you bless the lord the more he blesses you i never forget when i was a young man my mother and daddy were tithers my mother told me, she said, Son, God doesn't expect anybody to give the way you do. I said, I'm going to find out if this thing works while I'm young. I've been young, and now I'm 72 years young. And I found out it works. Hallelujah. How many found out that serving God works? Amen. Amen. Sing a little bit of that. I sing praises to your name. How much you love him. You've been back there working with the kids. Here's your opportunity. And sing those praises. Your Tell him how much you love him. I love you, Lord. Praises to your name. 